Hello everyone, my name is Bakshi Puneet and today we will perform the motor system examination of the upper and lower limb. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name? I'm Kirin Bakshi. Uh, today we will perform motor system examination. Okay. As we assess the motor system, focus on body position, involuntary movement, characteristics of muscles which is bulk, tone and strength, and at last, we should assess the coordination. Observe the patient's body position during movement and at rest. Abnormal position alert us to the condition such as mono or hemiparesis from stroke. Watch for involuntary movements such as tremors, tics, chorea or fasciculation. Note their location, quality, rate, rhythm and amplitude and their relation to posture, activity, fatigue, emotion and other factors. Inspect the size and contour of muscle. Do the muscle look flat or concave, suggesting the loss of muscle bulk from atrophy or wasting? If so, is the process unilateral or bilateral, proximal or distal? When inspecting for atrophy, pay particular attention to the hand, shoulder, thighs and leg. The spaces between the metacarpals where the dorsal interossei muscle lie should be fully or only slightly depressed. The thinner and hypothenar eminences of the hand should be full and convex. Atrophy of the hand muscle occurs in normal aging. Inspect for fasciculations in atrophic muscle. If absent, tap on the muscles with a reflex hammer which stimulates them. When a normal muscle with an intact nerve supply is relaxed voluntarily, it maintains a slight residual tension known as muscle tone. This is best assessed by feeling the muscle's resistance to passive stretch. Hold one hand with yours and while supporting the elbow, flex and extend the patient's fingers, wrist, elbow and put the shoulder through a moderate range of motion. On each side, note muscle tone the resistance offered to your movements. Tense patient may show increased resistance. With repeated practice, we will learn how to feel the normal resistance. If we suspect decreased resistance, hold the forearm and shake the body loosely back and forth. Normally, the hand moves back and forth freely, but it is not completely floppy. To assess the muscle tone in the leg, Support the patient's thigh with one hand and grasp the foot with the other. Flex and extend the patient's knee and ankle on each side. Note the resistance to the moving limb. Normal strength varies widely including the factors like age, sex and muscular training. The patient's dominant side is usually slightly stronger than the non-dominant side, though differences can be hard to detect. Keep this difference in mind as when we compare the sides. Test muscle strength by asking the patient to actively resist the movement. Remember that a muscle is strongest when shortest and weakest when longest. Give the patient the advantage as you try to overcome the resistance and judge through the muscle's true strength. Some patients give way during test of muscle strength due to pain, misunderstanding of the test and effort to help the examiner, conversion disorder or malingering. If the muscles are too weak to overcome resistance, test them against gravity alone or with gravity eliminated. When the forearm rests in a pronated position, for example, dorsiflexion at the wrist can be tested against gravity alone. 
when the forearm is midway between the pronation and supination extension at the wrist can be tested with gravity eliminated finally if the patient fails to move the body part observe or palpate for weak muscular contractions Test flexion and extension at the elbow by having the patient pull and push against your hand. Nerve responsible for elbow flexion is C5 and C6 and the nerve responsible for elbow extension is C6, C7 and C8. Test extension at the wrist by asking the patient to make a fist and resist as you press down. Ask the patient to squeeze two of your fingers as hard as possible and don't let them go. To avoid getting hurt by strong grips, place your own middle finger on top of your index finger normally it should be difficult for you to pull your fingers from patient's grip test both grips simultaneously with the patient's arm extended or in the lap to help compare the right hand grip with the left position the patient's hand with palm down and fingers spread Instruct the patient to prevent you from moving any finger as you try to force them together. Ask the patient to touch the tip of the little finger with the thumb against your resistance. Test flexion at the hip by placing your hand on the patient's mid thigh and asking the patient to raise the leg against your hand. Place your hand firmly on the bed between the patient's knee. Ask the patient to bring both legs together. Place your hand firmly outside the patient's knee. Ask the patient to spread both legs against your hands. Have the patient push the mid posterior thigh down against your hand. Support the knee in flexion and ask the patient to straighten the leg against your hand. The quadriceps is the strongest muscle in the body, so expect a forceful response. Position the patient's leg so that the knee is flexed with the foot resting on the bed. Tell the patient to keep the foot down as you try to straighten the leg. Test foot dorsiflexion and plantar flexion at the ankle by asking the patient to pull up and push down against your hand. Heel and toe walk also assess foot dorsiflexion and plantar flexion respectively.